Hello and welcome back to Mutakemel Financial Track. Uh, in this lecture, we're going to talk about the general ledger system and uh, of course it is one of the most important systems in Mutakemel and using that system, we can perform different transactions that affect the accounts. So to use general ledger system, you will go through different steps. First of all, you will need to do the necessary setup and uh, setting up all kinds of inputs. And afterwards, you will be able to add a variety of accounting transactions like journal vouchers and so on. Uh, so um, you can add also bank guarantees, which is basically through guarantee letters, and you will be able to extend or terminate those. Using the account system, the uh, user can post transactions and view reports for the different transactions in the different systems. In addition to all that, the entries or the setup that you add in General Ledger can also be used in different systems like the accounts, banks, and many others. We'll start with the General Ledger configuration and that entails the setup before you can go ahead and actually use the system. So it's like setting up the chart of accounts, for example. The first screen is options, and there are two tabs in the screen. First, the general options and uh, the transaction options. We will start with general options. The first variable is auto payment distribution, and this one is used when the facility want to divide the payments that the client make off of his indebtedness, and if the facility wants to deduct the payments uh, the client makes and distribute those payments automatically on the documents, then you can go ahead and activate this variable. Whether the indebtedness has um, has been proven with uh, the sales invoices. So if you make that selection, the system will start adding those payment uh, payments starting from the oldest due invoices. But if you unselect it, then uh, the user will have the option to select the specific invoice or specific document, which will get affected by the payment. And the system will bring up detailed reports on the customer's indebtedness and the payments they made accordingly. We'll move on to the next variable, which is deal with foreign currencies. Um, this one is pretty obvious. It's used to be able to uh, deal with, warm, with more than one currency in the system. And if you activate it, you will have the option to code and use more than one currency um, and even basically code more than one currency for the same account. But if you unselect it, then you will be using just one currency, which will be a local currency in the system. Uh, then we have post promotion account in sales. And this one is used to determine the posting of the free quantities in the sales invoices and how it will affect the accounts. If the company wants to separate the cost, uh, the cost basically of free quantities from the cost of sales accounts, then the user can go ahead and activate this variable. Um, if you activate it though, a new field will be added in the main group's detail screen uh, under the name promotion account. So you can select the account which will be affected by the cost of the free quantities when you post a sales invoice which includes free quantities. Consequently, the system will separate between the account for the cost of the sales and the account for the cost of the free quantities. If you unselect this option though, the cost of the free quantities plus the cost of the sold, uh, of the sold goods will both be posted to the basically cost of the sales account. Another variable, um, manually enter the equivalent amount to foreign amount. This option is used in case you activate the variable deal with foreign currency, um, which we explained just now. And it's used if the company wants to allow the user while they're entering an amount in a foreign currency to also manually enter the equivalent in the local currency. And that's going to be across multiple transaction screens. So the user manually enters the equivalent regardless of the maximum and the lowest exchange price. So if the company wants to grant the users this privilege, uh, then you can activate this variable. And this also results in the activation of a field or a column for the local currency across many screens in case a foreign currency was used. Uh, so it basically helps uh, prevent fractions in the amount in local currency. But if you do not activate it, 
uh, the system will automatically calculate the amount in the local currency according of course to the exchange rate. The next variable is show DESC, whatever that stands for, in journal vouchers and account statement. This option is used in case you want to import and use the data uh, of a transaction that's already been saved before to make a new transaction um, and basically make the process easier. So you can go ahead and activate this variable if you would like your users to have this privilege. Next variable we have is check available balance in cash, bank, or in payment vouchers, cash slash bank. So this basically allows for checking the available balance in the safe or bank. Um, and it's used if the company or the facility wants to prevent the users from creating a receipt voucher uh, without making sure that the balance allows for it. So if you activate this variable and a user uh, wants to create a receipt voucher but the balance is not sufficient, they will get an error message. The, next we have the variable use pending uh, uh, JVs, journal vouchers. This one is used if the company wants to use journal vouchers that are not balanced out. And this is used to save a journal voucher in which the a debit and credit are not balanced for any reason. And the user can later on go back to this journal voucher and continues editing if they had any missing documents uh, to start with. So note that if you use this, you can only save the journal voucher, but you cannot post it, nor will it affect the accounts unless it balances out. So if you want to give the users this kind of privilege, go ahead and activate it. Um, and this, by the way, but by the way, activates the option pending eatery in the journal voucher screen. So you can use this option. All right, so let's move on. The variable uh, print to forms for the journal voucher is used if you would like to uh, basically print the journal voucher as a receipt voucher or any other form the user wants to use. You can design the second form based on the need and the use for the report. Um, and apart from the ability to print out uh, this in the form of a daily journal, which is debit and credit. If the facility wants to print the daily journal in the form of notes receivable, then you can activate this, var this variable and activating it will add a field called print second form in the journal voucher screen. Uh, and that's used to print this form. Uh, so basically a facility will usually use this um, if they're using journal vouchers instead of notes receivable when they're cashing out the amount. Uh, if you do not activate this variable though, then the report will not be viewed except in the form of a journal voucher. The variable use a multiple uh, journal vouchers in documents. Um, this variable is used when the facility wants to divide and archive the journal vouchers into different types. So you can basically give a certain type uh, to each similar group of journal vouchers based on, based on the needs of the facility and how they would like to categorize their journal vouchers. And it's useful when it comes to bringing up reports by the type of the journal voucher. And if you activate this variable, you will be able to code each type of the journal vouchers to use them in the journal voucher screen, you will actually be obligated to assign a type. And if you do not activate this variable, however, then all of the journal vouchers will be treated as a single type. Uh, the variable we have next is allow entering currency difference adjusting entries. So this is used if the system admin wants to allow the users to create journal vouchers um, to basically adjust the currency difference. And it's used to close the difference that comes up uh, in the foreign currency accounts, which is the result of the increase or decrease in the exchange rates. And if you activate this variable, the system allows the user to enter the amount in the local, um, in the local credit or um, basically in the accounts to settle the difference. Uh, that's in the journal voucher screen where you will have the option currency difference entry. The system will create journal vouchers after the closing 
to settle the currency difference for the foreign currency accounts but if you do not do that manually um, basically doing uh, well basically will do that if you do not do it manually using journal vouchers um, the last variable we'll talk about today is show percentage column besides credit in journal voucher this if you want to have the system calculate the amount of credit automatically from the journal vouchers especially if there is more than one credits in the journal voucher entry um, if you activate this variable the system adds a column in the journal voucher screen so you can enter the percentage of each account from the credit and by percent percentage here we mean the percentage of each account from the total amount of the journal which is entered top of the screen so let's say the total amount of the journal is $100 and the percentage entered uh, for an account is 10% in the first credit account then the value uh, of the amount from the total amount of the journal is going to be $10 and if you activate this variable that does not mean that you need to um, specify the percentage or enter the percentage you can just enter the final amount or the uh, total amount of the credit account and that's basically all we have to say for this lecture thank you so much for watching please don't forget to subscribe follow us on facebook and instagram and stay safe